All right. First target, Newton's first law. Let's hit it. Okay, so the Newton's law, Newton's first law that we've seen before is that the change in momentum of a closed system is zero. So let's break that down for a second. What I'm going to do here is do a kind of like mini, I'm going to call it a mini derivation that shows us roughly how we translate from this understanding from momentum to an understanding that the change in velocity must be zero. Okay, so if I've got a single particle moving with some velocity v, okay, then I know that its momentum is just mv. So I can rewrite the left-hand side of this equation as delta m times v equals zero. Sweet. All right. So the change of the masses of our, of our system generally doesn't change. We call that conservation of mass. And until you deal with relativity, which hopefully we won't, <laughs> uh, mass is going to be a constant. You can't create or destroy mass as far as we're concerned. Don't tell Einstein I said that, though. Okay. So we're going to leave mass constant. So this change really is only going to affect the velocity. So it's going to be mass times change in velocity is zero. Okay, and now I notice that mass is always constant, or is always a, is a positive number. There's no such thing as negative mass. Again, don't talk to the particle people. <laughs> so mass is always positive as far as we're concerned. So since mass is always positive, I can just divide the other side by that positive number and It'll all be hunky-dory. So zero divided by any positive number is just zero. So the change in velocity for this closed system is just zero. Boom. Okay, now, <clears throat> in words, what does this mean? This tells me that an object in motion tends to stay in motion at the same constant velocity. An object at rest tends to stay at rest at zero velocity. Equivalent statements. So, uh, yeah. There's an unless that's tacked on sometimes, which is unless acted on by an outside force. So that actually is a nice little segue into this refresher for what, what closed means. Okay, so closed means there is no net external force. So closed means that the sum of the forces acting on my system sum to zero. So net means sum. So external means acting from outside the system. So external means from a member of the universe that is not contained in my system. So you kind of just define a system and then there's a universe outside it. So um, in these asteroid problems we've been do doing, usually we've been treating either one asteroid or both asteroids as our system. Yeah. And depending on which definition you pick, you can have external forces or not have external forces. If I treat the moon as my system, and here's the Earth, and here's my system box for the moon, well, then there is an external force on this moon because there is a force coming from the Earth. It's generating a gravitational force on the moon. So that represents an external force. It's coming from an entity that is not enclosed in my system. Okay, that's what external means. That's what net means. So <clears throat> the external force is a vector sum. Force external is a vector sum, and this is net. There we go. Force external net is the sum of all of the external forces on my system combined. So I'm summing over all external forces. I'm going to underline this equation. It's not as important as the boxed equations. This is just saying um, the way that you have external net forces is when, is when the external forces individually sum to a non-zero vector. So when this is zero, this thing, this uh, no change in velocity holds. So I'll, I'll rephrase this a little bit here. So if the external net force, which is the sum, the vector sum of all net external forces, is equal to zero, then we have this. The change in velocity of my system overall is zero. There's no net change in the velocity of the system. Okay. And uh, to be super specific again, that really for a system refers to a change in velocity of the uh, center of mass of the system, but like where the, where the average mass of the system is, say. For a single particle, which is mostly what we're going to be worried about, it really is just the single velocity of the single particle. I think now is a good time also to talk about this concept of static equilibrium, which I think you encountered a couple of DLs ago. Um, but here it is in a little bit more detail, these two words, static and equilibrium. Static 
we usually take to mean velocity equals zero. Now, sometimes people play with this definition a little bit, so I'd say this is kind of a softer definition. Usually when I say static, I mean it's not moving relative to me, or its velocity relative to me is zero. When we say equilibrium, equilibrium, whoa, equilibrium for a physical system, we mean that the sum of the forces uh, external to the system and the uh, sum of the torques external to the system are zero. So for something to be in static equilibrium, what we mean is that the forces, there's no net force, there's no net torque, and our velocity is zero. Equilibrium means that forces and torques cancel. Static means that the velocity is zero. You might ask yourself, can there be such a thing as non-static equilibrium? So can I have a situation where I've got forces which sum to zero and torques which sum to zero, but I have motion? Hmm. Something for you to think about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the next video with that, though. Stick around. It's a cliffhanger. Whoa. <laughs>